Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And T Mobile has officially released their Q1 numbers, and the, the Q1 earnings call is now complete. And now I wanted to make my video. So I have an article here from Reuters, which I will leave in the description so you guys could check it out. T Mobile misses estimates for quarterly revenue, wireless subscriber additions. They missed them as well. So they came up a little bit short, but their Q1s generally are not as action packed in terms of growth as, say, versus Q4. So to kind of backtrack a little, in the fourth quarter, T Mobile grew 927 postpaid, 927,000 postpaid net additions. In this Q1, they grew 538,000 postpaid net additions. And that's a little bit down from the analyst expectations of, of, of 547,000. So that is down a little bit. But T-Mobile did raise its full year for, forecast for wireless subscriber growth. So something... Something interesting to note there that they uh, that they added that in. They did they did raise guidance for 2023 on subscriber growth. Now, during the during the call, lots of lots of info that I that I wanted to share in this video, and that leaves me very confident in T-Mobile. So they they reached 275 million pops covered with ultra uh, ultra capacity. So they got that going and they did that at the end of Q1 and that's about what 20 yeah 25 million left to hit 300 million. I think they do that very comfortably. I think they actually crush that goal. I think they get that get to that 300 million a little bit before the end of the year. I I do I do truly believe that because they seem to be running at a very good pace on that mid-band build. You know, it gets harder and off did talk about that during the quarterly earnings this is every 10 million now moving forward is going to get very hard because of it, it gets now it gets very very rural for them right that last 25 million pops is going to be very rural um very large geographic areas that they have to cover so it's going to get harder and he did mention that during the quarterly earnings so that's one one target that they hit um also, they gave several updates on business. Looks like they're killing it on business. They 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 were uh, positive against Verizon for like the last four quarters on the on the SMB, which is small business. So that's that's something that that I figured was a foregone conclusion. T-Mobile's network is getting better. They're cheaper. So that's that's an impact on Verizon. Now, the one that I'm looking into, you know, that I that I like to hear about is the the, the big corporate lines. And those are some announcements that T-Mobile was making, you know, the VA um, that they recently got. Those, those are like 50,000 lines. So that's pretty big. So they got that one. And then, you know, we'll hear more, more of those bigger announcements throughout the year. But that's not saying that they aren't getting other accounts too, right? Like they got AutoZone. They got Circle K recently. Those aren't like super, super big accounts. But they're still gaining them. And according to Mike Siebert, they're gaining them backed on the model that they're now pushing very heavily that they have the best overall network. So it's not so they're not getting these uh, lines, these business lines based on network perception. He's saying these companies are testing the network. They're getting hundreds of phones, hotspot devices. They're testing it for their needs and then it, it meets their needs. And then they choose T-Mobile because it's cheaper. That's how that works. And that's going to be a big problem for Verizon and AT&T moving forward. I think they have to really look at that. And again, you know, it's not it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's not going to happen next quarter or next, you know, next year, but little by little each and every quarter they 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 take. T-Mobile takes and it adds up. So they have to competitively look at that scope and they have to see how do they compete against that? Do they sl do they slash their prices? Do they maybe, you know, go lower than T-Mobile? All of that has to be taken into consideration as T-Mobile continues to compete in that space. And they do so very, very effectively. You got you to gotta keep that in mind, right? They compete in that 
business space very effectively with with internet you know the uh, business uh, business internet they, they're doing that she didn't really Kali Field didn't really touch on that too much there was a question asked about it but it was it was it was skipped during the call but I'm sure that the take rate on that is 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 probably very good as well for T-Mobile so business doing good now another segment that they that they disclosed some additional info on which found which I found interesting is the small small areas uh, small towns rural areas that is a segment that T-Mobile has been underpenetrated didn't really compete there and now they compete in two thirds of that and they disclosed today a, a, an actual number so the guidance that they gave in 2021 is that they wanted to be at 20% by 2025 today or, you know, or as of the end of Q1 he, uh, John Fryer stated they're already at 16.5% so I think, and I and I disclosed this in a video recently. I think their guidance is the, the the most conservative ever. Right, they're growing fairly quickly. They went from eleven to thirteen, and then they went from thirteen to sixteen point five, and they did that in a relatively short period. So their 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 winning rate is like is like upwards of close to thirty. I'm hearing in some areas. Right, the port ratios are like 25 to 1 against Verizon. When T-Mobile accomplished their their pops that they wanted to be at in Montana, like 90, they now cover like 90% of pops in Montana with native coverage. The port outs were like 25 to 1 against Verizon. That's insane. And they're still only that 16.5% number market share that was given today was based on the fact that they still only compete in two thirds of those. Of those small towns and rural areas they haven't even gone beyond that yet so the network is still growing in those parts they're going to continue growing that i think they crush that 20 percent by 2025 i think they get to a number of between 22 to 25 percent and you got to think 33 percent is fair share out of 100 33 percent is fair share so t-mobile has a ways to go but they're getting there the network is growing at a phenomenal pace. I get pictures every day. New sites are going up in rural. And they're taking advantage of it. And the fact that they're growing it so quickly in a short time means that there's demand. People want T-Mobile. People are, are looking at national advertising and they want T-Mobile. So as soon as T-Mobile gets native coverage there, it's, it's, it's a wrap, so to speak. They go to T-Mobile. So that was very, uh, very interesting to, to hear that, 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 that they're having success in those small markets and rural towns. Another, um, another big part, of course, uh, home internet, right? 523,000 customers added for the quarter, and they will continue that. They will continue to figure out ways to remain competitive and to keep growing that business very successfully and smartly. So there are a few other things. They, they were asked about the price increases, but they didn't really. Of course, they're not going to speak on that in a negative way. They spoke of it positively. They say early on since the plan launched the 5G Go and the 5G Go Plus, it's been a success for them. They're, they're hinting at, you know, a similar take rate as Magenta Max. So, you know, that they're going to make more money on this. And. You know, now that they're outside of that three-year window of raising prices, um, they might do it. And they talked about that at the very end of the earnings call, you know, the, the, depending on inflation, how the market is. They may go up in price, but they did say that they would be below the competition because that's what they're focused on. They're focused on the customer base, and they would be below the competition. How they pull that off, that remains to be seen. But even with the recent price increase for the on the new plans, it's not forced on you. You choose it. And I think that's that's I think that's a very good thing. So if you remain on Magenta Max on your current plan, whatever, you get to keep that price point. If you're still on the T-Mobile one, you get to keep that price point. It's up to you voluntarily if you want to switch to the 5G Go and 5G Go Plus. T-Mobile is not in your house putting a gun to your head telling you to switch. It's all up to the consumer. And that's why T-Mobile is testing their brand. They want to see how strong the brand is. Can they implement a higher plan and people choose it can they put a little bit more value in there 
and can people choose it? So that's that's very interesting uh, approach in my opinion, and it seems to be working. We'll see when when they release Q2 earnings, but it seems to be working. So another thing I want to point out to net income, I know that's been bashed on for for a while now, but they incre they're they're increasing that every quarter now it seems. So last in Q4, the net income came in at 1.48 billion. In this quarter, the net income came in at 1.9 billion, which was an increase of 172%. So still behind the competition, right? In comparison, AT&T's net income is at like 4 billion, Verizon's at like 6.58 billion. So T-Mobile has has room to grow. So there's upside there. As they continue taking share as the merger related costs almost come to a complete halt that net income should be i think closer to three billion and we should see that grow throughout the course of this year i think in q2 um 2.3 2.4 billion net income and then inching closer to at&t's net income as they go through this year and next year so that's very interesting right but other than that they they said that they 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 were still the 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 industry leader in growth although that that growth was slower so that, that they did maintain that and i said that would happen i said that in a previous video regardless of how the industry goes if it's if it's more competitive t-mobile wins if it's slower and less competitive t-mobile still comes out ahead and that's exactly what happened for t-mobile now one thing that's very interesting to note and i'll close out the video because i'll I'll make another video uh, recapping. Um, interesting to note, T-Mobile came out ahead. They were the growth leader again for, for Q1. E even though it, they didn't hit estimates, they were still ahead of Verizon on and at t on net ads. And they did so by having massively lower ads marketing, uh, marketing media spend for the quarter. Mike Seward referenced during the call that he's, they spent 60% less versus the competition on that and i think that's a pretty big achievement so the brand image the perception word of mouth all of that is working it's working in their favor they're not having to spend as much marketing dollars to outgrow the competition so just imagine if they would have been right there spending wise in q1 how much more they could have potentially grown so keep that in mind. And I'm sure now with the new plans and everything, I'm sure that marketing budget is probably going to increase a little bit. But it seems like they don't have like a big need to increase it to get results that they're wanting. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe to the channel. Follow my social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See you all in the next one. Peace.